Today we'll be looking at the key to distinction. That's the message. When a man is distinct, it means he's different from others. There are certain peculiarities about that man that makes him stand out. For instance, Jacob had 12, but Joseph, the 11, said, I saw my bread and bow to me in Genesis 37, verse 7. He was distinct. He said, I'm not just like everybody. I am different from all of you. May your story be like that of Joseph in the New Testament. No matter the crowd, you'll be distinct. He was different. He was not the first. He was not the last. In the natural, normally they say, well, it's our firstborn. It's our lastborn. Even if you see parents, they love either first or last. But Joseph was the 11th. Yet he said, I'm distinct. I'm not like everybody. So it doesn't matter the number you are. I came to announce to you, no matter the crowd, you will be distinct and you'll be separated from others. Yeah. Distinction is simply when a man is set aside for excellence. He said, those who we pray, that's not the ones who we call, and everyone who call it justified. And everyone who justified, he glorified. Romans 8, 30. So we have been created to enjoy distinction. So I'm created to enjoy distinction. Distinction is not for a selected few. It's for every child of God who is born again. Because in the last days, God says, it shall come to pass that you shall be exalted above all nations of the earth. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 2b and 7b, it says, A great people is strong. They have not been there. Neither shall any among them after it. Even to the years of many generations. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Everyone, irrespective of our fields, God is saying we will stand out. We will not. No, the teacher, stand out. The contractor, the politician, the pastor. That's what God is saying. No matter where we are, each one will be outstanding. And God speaking said, you shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above. No option. It's number 28 to 13. But if I want to be distinct in life, there are certain qualities. There are keys that determine how I become distinct. But we'll be looking at one major key that will make you to be distinct. There, there were people before a man called Abraham. But amongst all on earth, Abraham was the only one God picked and distinguished. He was not the only one in this time. But something made Abraham to be distinguished. He enjoyed exceptional distinction because God said to him at the age of 75, in Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 4, he said, Abraham, this was when he was already 70. You know, to change a man of 75 is not simple. That they have a fixed way of thinking. Once a man is above 40, he has a fixed way of thinking. It's difficult to change anybody above 40. Except the person renews his mind with the word of God. Abraham at 75 already has a way of what? It was fixed. And God said to him at 75, said, come out of your people. I will take you to a land I will show you at 75. <laughs> he would have said to God, oh, you know, at this age I'm already old. The Bible said, and he departed. And he did what? He obeyed God at 70. God said to him again, he said, I want to circumcise yourself. <laughs> he, immediately God spoke, he obeyed. He spoke to him one day, he said, look, don't argue, send away Haggai and Ishmael. He never disobeyed. One day God tested him again, he said, I want you to bring your son Isaac whom you love. He obeyed. Every point God spoke to Abraham, he obeyed. And his level of distinction is transgenerational that today we are still talking about Abraham's blessings. Israel and the new covenant Israel is blessed because of one man Abraham's obedience. So the major key to enjoy Abraham's kind of blessing is obedience. Is what? If you must be distinct in life, then you must walk in obedience. Obedience is practical adherence to God's word, irrespective of how you feel. 
made him preach a very powerful message. He said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Don't bother how you feel. Just do it. Many of us know scriptures, but we don't obey scriptures. Knowing scriptures without obedience, you will still not succeed. He that heareth these sayings of mine is knowing and doeth them is like not to a wise man. If ye be willing, and what? You shall eat. Obedient is doing what you know. I've looked at the benefits of obedience. Benefits of what? Obedience. Benefits of obedience. I'll take that very fast. Because if I know the benefits, nobody will cajole me to obey God or to obey whatever he tells me. Because I know that if I don't obey, I'm the one who will lose. True? Yes. What are the benefits of obedience? Number one, it is the master key to all round blessings. Obedience is the master key to all round Blessings. Did you know me? 28, 1, 2, and 13. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments which he commanded this day, the Lord thy God shall set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee. If thou hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and then if I said, and the Lord shall make thee what? And I think all the blessings will only come when you obey. When you do what? When you obey. So if I want to get blessings, what do I do? Obey. Number two, benefit. It is a ladder to higher heights. It is a ladder to higher heights. It shall be above only. Deuteronomy 28, 13. Number three, benefit. It guarantees unlimited prosperity and all round well being. Guarantees unlimited what? And all round well being. If they obey and serve me, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Job 26, verse 11. If they obey and serve, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Hmm? Number four, benefit, it makes you have good success. It makes you have what? Joshua 1 8. This book of law shall not depart on the man. That shall be taken in day and night. That thou mayest observe to do. When you observe to do, then what will happen? You shall have what? Good success. If you don't do, you may have half success. Good sucks is a function of obedience. Number one, five. It delivers good things of life. It delivers the good things of Isaiah 119. If you be willing to obey, you shall eat the good of the land. You shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah 119. Number six. It guarantees progress in life. Obedience guarantees progress in Proverbs 4.18. The part of the just shall 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 day. Number one? Seven? Hmm? You sure? It provokes divine wisdom. Obedience provokes what? Matthew 7, 24 to 27. He that hear this says of my hand, do what them is likened unto a wise man. Matthew 7, 24 to Number eight, obedience provokes signs and wonders. John 2 verse 5, whatever it tells you to do, do it. Do it. Don't argue it. Do it. Mm. It provokes healing. Obedience provokes what? Healing. John 9, 1 to 7. He said to the man, go and wash the pool of where? Slum. The man said, ah, he obeyed and then God healed him. Some of us is obedience. We would have been healed since. Read this book. Now, 
one of the daughters of God here, she has said today that she used to be afraid because of the experience she had. And a simple instruction, read this book. And she did what? She obeyed and read the book, the real you, and said fear was destroyed. And somebody else said, read. He said, what? Pastor, speak the word, speak the word, speak the word. There are things that don't speak word. You have to read. Fear, they don't speak word. You have to have word to overcome fear. A wise man is strong. A man of knowledge increases strength. This is speak the word, increases strength. So you have to have knowledge to increase what? Strength, to overcome fear. You want to the one, the one, the one. Anytime somebody comes and they say, read the book, I say, speak the word, that person doesn't want to grow. Let me say this to you as a Christian. If somebody comes to you and you say, take this book and read, and they say, no, just pray for me, pray for me, just pray, that person doesn't want to grow. That's a sign of a lousy Christian who doesn't want to grow. It makes God to respond positively to you. Obedience makes God to respond positively to you. 1 John 3, 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Number 11, you enjoy promotion. Obedience makes you enjoy promotion. Philippians 2, 8 to 9. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So when you obey God, God exalts you. May God exalt someone right now. Amen. Number 12, obedience creates miracles. Obedience creates what? Miracles. First Kings 17, 15 to 16. Brings about divine provision. Obedience brings divine provision. That's what I mean. Creates miracles. Remember the widow of Zarephath? Elijah said to her, make for me First, our obedience created all the miracles she needed. She went and did according to the sin of Elijah, and she and he and her house did it many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which is spake by Elijah. We have talked about the benefits of obedience, but do you know there are reasons for disobedience? And I'll tell you reasons for what? Disobedience. One major reason why people disobey God is lack of faith. Lack of faith in God. They don't believe that what God says he will do, that he will do it. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. That command to God must believe that he said one of them will deliver the world. Hebrews 11 verse 6. When a man lacks faith, he cannot obey God because he does not believe that what God says he will do, he will do. He doubts God, and when you doubt God, it pains him. He does not believe that what God says he will do, he will do. He says, are you sure that God will do it? One major reason why people disobey God is lack of faith in God and his word. Second is why people disobey God is tradition. Is what? Tradition is not playing masquerade though. Tradition is standing in a fixed belief system contrary to God's word. Anything contrary to God's word that is your belief system is a tradition. Is a what? God's word, for instance, tells you, love your wife. He said, no, in our tradition, the woman has to love only the man. The man, his own, is to only provide. He said, did the Bible say so? He said, no, leave the Bible aside. When you hear a man say, leave the Bible aside, it's already aside. Tradition is worse than the devil. Ask me why. You can cast out the devil. You can't cast out tradition. When somebody is working, he will disobey God at every point. And people are full of traditional, even church people. 
Listen, but you know, the Bible says, heaven help those who help themselves. So they go in the morning to church, in the evening they go to Abalis. As they living in church, they say, heaven help those who help themselves. Oh boy, we have to help ourselves. So. This election coming now. You mean not let church will make you win? When you finish church, you own. Also go to the other side, though. So he goes to church in the morning. He look here, look here. Enter one place in the United. <laughs> it's a brother side to walk oh. If you take on the church, you're not going to win the election. No? It's full of He said, put the Bible aside. He said, this girl, not be your wife. Oh. He said, boy, leave this thing now. What did they talk now? Care where I don't train for school. <laughs> so make my money loss. <laughs> he said you have trained her, but she's your girlfriend now. So now marry anybody. No boy, no way. I've invested so much. So the dividend is the marriage. Once a man begins to do like that, he will disobey God. When they tell you the Bible said, even if you're hard, when they say Bible said, your body will be cold. For those who fear God, sir. I would have bought because of the word of God. When somebody gets to a point, he says, leave Bible. Oh boy, leave Bible. Such a person, forget it. He will never obey God. But three reasons for disobedience. A self-justification. Self-what? You do something, you always have a reason why you did the bad thing. You always have a reason to justify why you did it. They say this you did it somehow. He said, I did it because. It's because. It's because. Yeah. You can't justify anything and correct it. There's nothing you justify that you can correct. And it's okay, this particular girl, Liva, he said, after all, other people like me too, they carry. So what is this special? Anything you justify, you can't correct. He said, why are you taking something that does not belong to you? Everybody is taking now. Am I the first to take? A typical example is the man, King Saul in the Bible. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, God told him, destroy everything. The Amalekites, kill everybody, came back and said, the reason why he kept this one, King Haggag and the rest, is to make sure God takes. God said, I didn't tell you so now. And Samuel said, Had the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Did he hear that? That's obedience. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. You justify anything you do when you know it's wrong. Every time you do the wrong thing, don't accept it. Then will you change. But if you justify it, you will never, never correct what you justify. It will be difficult to obey God when you justify a thing. I did it because I slept with her because my wife does not sleep with me. Is that why you will not sleep? Don't justify it. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's okay. I will change. Since my wife refused to give me her body, I have to take another one. Yeah, he said, that's the reason. He said, yes. Because my wife and every time I don't agree, so I go die. <laughs> you are trying to justify the wrong. When it's wrong, take it and say it is wrong. Don't justify. Once you justify any sin, you can never correct it. He did the wrong thing. God said, why did you do it? He was justifying why he did it. I did it because him know the do Did they say two of you should do the same thing? Why did you slap your husband? I slapped him because he slapped me first. <laughs> so me too, I have to give it back to him. Why did you beat her? Because her mouth is always sharp. You know, they say, sorry, I made a mistake for slapping her. I think I won't do it again. No, I have to slap her because she was pointing her hand at me. Such a man will never obey the word. Number four, why would you obey God? He will not believe that it is impossible to please God. He will not believe that it is impossible to do what? Please God. 
Irenaeus believed that it is impossible to please God. 1 John 5, 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not what? Grievous. Believing that there's no way you can ever please God. Finally, the reason why people disobey God is trust in self. Trust in what? When they come to a point is trust in self, you will never obey God. Trust in and no self-made man. If you are self-made, you will be self-destroyed. People don't obey God because they say, my hand made me. Even I've seen people who talk with some arrogance as if God does not exist in their syllabus. First Corinthians 4, 7. He said, who make it to differ from another? And what has done that that did not receive? Now, if that is receive it, why does that glory as if that has not received it? Whatever you have, he made you. So don't, don't carry your shoulder as if you made yourself. You know, I read very well. And because I read, that's why I made first class. I read. When I talk, nobody talks. You say this man, oh, he has arrived. People like that don't obey God. When they see small things, they think they made themselves. No self made man. No self what? We are all made by God. One day Nebuchadnezzar came on the scene, wanted to be a self made man. Herod came on the scene. You know, when you feel that your pride will come in. Pride will come in. And God doesn't like pride. He said God resisted. You can imagine God resisting a man. When you read that scripture from surface, you wonder that God coming as the, the obstacle to you. You know, you can cast out Satan. How do you cast out God? When you are proud... If it's the devil, you cast him out now. This is God himself coming to stand to block you. That's why pride people don't rise. God resisted. That means you're coming forward. He stands to say, no, you're not moving. So now how do you cast God? Proud people, when they crash. Don't say Satan crashed. Satan crashed. No way. Read your Bible. All the proud people that crash, they either die or they never rise. Are you too fair? Satan, Nebuchadnezzar, Herod, either they die or they are humiliated to a point where everything about them is removed. God will strip them like this. Don't get to that point in your heart. Oh. God will tell you, please obey. We are not there to obey because of obey. Oh. Don't think that one small three houses you build in one place is enough. Rich people have crashed to the ground. Multi billionaires have become poor in nations. Humble yourself, obey him, whatever it tells you to do.